Welcome back. Fighting fear with facts. It's what we're trying to do every night during this pandemic around this time. And tonight we're joined by Mayor Ron Nuremberg, as we are most every Wednesday. Mr. Mayor, thank you for joining us tonight. We've, Great to be with you, Steve. We've got some good questions. And the first thing we want to talk about is the so-called recovery and resilience plan. What is the goal of this plan that, that city staff laid out today? Well, the goal of the plan is really to uh, prioritize our resources to make sure that we're dealing with uh, the response first, which is the bulk of the CARES Act funding uh, related to the emergency response, testing and tracing, so that we have the conditions set for safe opening of the economy. And then it's really to put ourselves on a path to restore the livelihoods that have been disrupted uh, we know that many people have been out of work. Uh, there have been a lot of, um, you know, general uh, aberrations and disruptions in our economy, and we're trying to get back on track, but in a more resilient manner. We know that the COVID, post-COVID economy is not going to look like it did before, and so we want to be ready for that. When, I asked you this question at 6 o'clock, but when you're specifically talking about tourism and hospitality and some of the things that our economy is largely built on right now are those the kind of job sectors that you're looking at those are some of them because that's one of the industries that we know is going to take a little bit of time to get back to full speed and what full speed looks like uh you know a year from now may be dramatically different than what it did beforehand and so we want to make sure that those uh, workers that have been impacted have the ability to get back to work uh, but also are getting back to work in, in jobs that will last. Uh, that requires, obviously, in some cases, some retraining, uh, some opportunities for education and access, uh, but also uh, it requires us to uh, get small businesses themselves that have been impacted back up to speed. A lot of the, them have been offline for a couple, three months. Job training a big part of that effort, I'm guessing. It is. And so we are working with uh, several different partners uh, to really get a scope uh, for the work that's going to take place. Uh, it will be staggered over the course of a year. Um, but, you know, it, it's really, again, aimed at the, mainly those workers whose uh, livelihoods and careers have been disrupted because the, po the, because the COVID economy uh, saw some significant uh, disruptions. And then going forward, we'll not see a return to the way things were either immediately or ever. And we've got to be ready for that. All right, let's get to some of the viewer questions tonight. Stay home, work safe, designed to help flatten the curve. Now that the curve has been flattened, why are you trying to extend it? So the flattening of the curve is an ongoing battle. And so as we begin to open up, the economy and, and the governor defines new activities and businesses that can open, there's still an effort to contain the virus. Uh, in part, assess where it is through testing, uh, make sure that when we do identify those cases, we can trace where they originated, and then ultimately we can isolate them from the rest of the public. If we don't do that, then we risk more outbreaks and, and us potentially going backwards in terms of the opening. So when it comes to the stay home, work safe orders, and where we are now, it's really about acknowledging that some of those businesses and activities have been opened, but we also have to continue our efforts to contain the virus by practicing our physical distancing, making sure we're wearing masks, and ultimately, as the testing and tracing and all the other protocols are in place, rules to make sure that the data is being um, uh, transferred properly and, and all the other protocols that need to be in place as we continue to march forward in the opening of the economy. Right, just because the curve has been flattened doesn't necessarily mean that the virus is gone. That's right, we won't be totally in the clear uh, really until there's a vaccine and that's some time away. But in the meantime, we don't need to hold everything back as long as we have these capacities and protocols in place and we're mindful of the things that we need to do, some of them being physical distancing and, and you know, infection control, like wearing a mask, that we can do so we can continue to open up while we contain the virus. All right, next question. Since the state has started to reopen, have you received more calls for stay home work safe violations? You know, it, it, it has it has leveled off. Um, you know, obviously, when we were going uh, first going into the, the deeper restrictions of stay home and work safe, uh, it was all new. And so we were getting quite a bit of calls. 
but as we've opened, as, as as things have opened up, the nature of the calls has changed. I think people are, are more comfortable with the protocols. They kind of know what to expect. So those have waned a little bit. But keep in mind, our success, the ability to control this infection, one of the reasons why San Antonio has really done better than most any other big city in the country is because we have been doing this uh, as a result of trusting our medical professionals and as, and the medical professionals providing the data and the inform information needed timely to make informed decisions to protect our, ourselves and our families and our businesses. That's the reason why we've been successful. That work is going to continue regardless of the nature of the orders that are in place, either at the state or the local level. Right. Next question. Have more people been getting tested since testing capacity has increased in San Antonio? And just naming some new locations today where people can get tested tomorrow. Are you seeing more people getting tested? Dramatically so. Uh, and, you know, we've talked before about capacity being increased and we've been steadily increasing capacity. We were under 1,000 before. A couple of weeks ago, we reached 1,600 and announced just this week we, we went from 2,000 to 3,000. Now we're almost at 4,000 capacity, but it wasn't solving the demand issue. We've seen demand go up significantly because we've opened up the protocol. We're now testing asymptomatic uh, individuals. Hopefully there is a reason for you to go get a test, either that you believe you've been exposed to someone who has COVID-19 or that you actually exhibit symptoms. But regardless of that fact, you can go now to one of the walk-up testing sites and get a test without a doctor's order, without an appointment, and really you don't require health insurance or even money to get a test. So that has actually increased our testing pretty dramatically, and we're up over 2,000 tests per day now, which is a significant difference even from uh, about a week and a half ago. Yeah, that's great. All right, is anything being done to help the homeless who've been turned away from shelters to prevent overcrowding? Because a lot of the shelters in town early on in this pandemic shut their doors. Uh, yes, and this is one area where I think the, the community of San Antonio has shined, um, you know, relative to our peers across the country. We've had a focused effort with community organizations, faith congregations, as well as the city and the county. Uh, several things are happening. One is we have made isolation uh, facilities available for people who may be experiencing homeless, that homelessness. They have an opportunity to be in a shelter, a, a hotel room if necessary, particularly if they are exhibiting symptoms. We also have set up homeless hubs around the city, all over the city, to provide essential uh, services, food, uh, as well as sanitation kits, and even screening, monitoring of symptoms and temperatures to make sure that there's no one uh, that is out there that has symptoms. Uh, we've also been working to um, ensure that uh, the, the community at large is aware of, uh, of these protocols and, and so what we've seen is pretty is uh, really astounding when you see what else is happening around the country. We have had no recorded cases of homeless individuals contracting COVID-19. Knock on wood, we hope that continues. We obviously wanna make sure that we provide the essential care for everyone in our community, regardless of their circumstances. But we're very, very thankful that this major area of concern has so far been contained and, and uh, that's a credit to everyone involved. Yeah, absolutely. All right, final question for you tonight. I know I'm not the only one that has kids at home and is noticing the temperature getting up into the high 90s. When will the city pools open up? Uh, it's a it's an area of, of great interest. And, and what I will tell you is that while the governor did allow for permit uh, public pools to be open, uh, but he also made clear that uh, Pools, uh, the city owned pools, local government managed pools uh, will be managed by those local governments. So what we are doing is working through a plan to safely open our pools. I expect them to be open uh, a little bit later, uh, but we're we're monitoring different the successive phases of opening Texas to make sure that there's no spikes. So once we pass uh, our data tests to make sure it's we're, we're, we're safe and we're not seeing another surge in cases, we're gonna to begin to open those pools, but the plan is being worked on right now. Great. Mayor Ron Nuremberg, appreciate your time as always. Anytime, have a great night, y'all. All right, take care. We'll be right back.